We love our time on the water in Minnesota. We love to fish, we love to swim, we love to canoe, kayak, paddleboard, and we like to do it on lots of different bodies of water. So don't forget, when you move a canoe, a kayak, a swim platform, or a stand-up paddleboard from one body of water to another, take it out of the resource and let it dry completely for a full five days before entering a new resource. And we can continue to enjoy our Minnesota traditions the way they are today. With a limited amount of time to utilize our resources here in Minnesota, you may find yourself hard pressed to utilize the five day dry time that is suggested when going between bodies of water for canoes, kayaks, or any water toy for that matter. But know that you can always decon yourself. A 10 minute bath with 100 degree water will alleviate all bacteria. A 120 degree bath for two minutes will alleviate that same bacteria. And a 140 degree bath for as little as 10 seconds will kill all bacteria and ensure that you don't spread aquatic invasive species between bodies of water. Oh my, you spend time enjoying our resources here in Minnesota You've deployed or retrieved an anchor just like this. You know what, we're doing a great job of protecting our resources by clean, draining and drying, pulling plugs, and making sure that everything gets dry. But don't overlook our beloved anchor, or any gear for that matter. You wanna make sure that that dries completely between aquatic environments. So the rope, the anchor, make sure it dries for a full five days. We are so lucky here in the state of Minnesota with incredible natural resources, especially aquatic natural resources. And when it comes to invasive species, let's not forget, 95% of our waters are clean, clear, and free of invasive species. But without knowing which ones are infested and which ones aren't, if you find yourself on any body of water, whether you go fishing, pontooning, or even a day with the kids, make sure that you clean, drain, and dry before you go to your next body of water. If you want to decon it, there are certain stations available across the state you can stop in at, or you can give your gear a bath yourself. 100 degree water utilized for 10 minutes, 120 degree water sprayed on for two minutes, or 140 degree water for just 10 seconds will kill the spread of invasive species and make sure we protect these great waters we have here in Minnesota and keep all of our Minnesota traditions alive. When it comes to aquatic invasive species, if you don't want to carry the critters that we don't want from one body of water to another, don't forget about all the little things that are inside your boat to get wet. We're doing a great job, Minnesota, of pulling our plugs between bodies of water, but we also need to make sure that our landing nets are free, clean, drain, dried. Our anchors are clean, drain, dried. Or even the ropes that we're utilizing to tie our boats to the dock, all these can be transfer systems and move invasive species from one body of water to another. So do your part. Let's clean it, drain it, dry it, dispose, and protect the 95% of Minnesota waters that are invasive species free. Let's not forget that over 95% of Minnesota's waters have no invasive species. We have lots to protect here. So if you ever put your fishing boat, pontoon, water ski boat, or what have you, in a body of water that you know is infested with invasive species. Be sure to decon it before you get back to our pristine waters here in Minnesota. You want to decon yourself? It's a pretty simple program. You can give it a bath for 10 minutes at 100 degree water, or 120 degrees for two minutes, or 140 degrees for a simple 10 seconds will ensure that we stop the spread of invasive species and protect Minnesota's aquatic resources. You know what, we're doing a great job of protecting our resources by clean, draining and drying, pulling plugs, and making sure that everything gets dry. But don't overlook our beloved anchor, or any gear for that matter, you want to make sure that that dries completely for a full five days. Of course, you know, you can always decon it yourself. A 100 degree water bath for 10 minutes, or a 120 degree bath for two minutes, or a 140 degree bath for a simple 10 seconds will kill aquatic invasive bacteria, ensure that you stop the spread of aquatic invasive species.
As a fisherman, I don't want to assist in the spread of aquatic invasive species. So as I buy and utilize live bait uh, as my fishing tool, I got to come up with a system that works for me to get my bait from here to here. So one of the systems that I use most often is I will go to the bait dealer in the morning and I buy myself a bag of minnows, maybe it's leeches, what have you. But at the same time, I also pick up an extra bag of water to go along with that. And then that stays inside my cooler. When I get to the body of water that I want to fish, I have a system. I'm going to transfer that to the boat. The way I do that is that I utilize either a mesh bag like this, or I've also got a bait bucket like this that sits inside my live well. Maybe you do too. Or you might even have a flow through type uh, bait bucket just like this. Regardless of what it is, I open this up and I take the minnows and the water. I pour it through here, putting the minnows in the bag, leaving the water that came from the bait dealer in this cooler, of which I snap shut and slide it inside my pickup and let it sit there all day. The bait I take from here, put it inside my boat, fish with it all day. End of the day, I get back, I lift up this mesh bag, drain it completely, put it back in this uh, cooler with water that came from the bait dealer that is nice and clean, and I put my bait there and I can utilize it again tomorrow. You know what, this is important to me because I want to protect the resources that we have. A lot of invasive species can get transferred by simple water going from one body of water to another. So it's up to us as anglers to find a system that works best for us to help protect all of our water. Curious about how to transfer bait from the boat to your vehicle so you can utilize it multiple days in a row? It's as simple as a flow through bait system. They're, they make mesh bags like we have here, a drainable li uh, live well bucket that goes inside your live well here, or even one that attaches to the outside of the boat and you can drag it along. That flows through as well. Get to the end of the day, drain all the water from the bucket, from the lake, put it back into fresh, clean water that you've kept inside of a cooler, and you can utilize your bait multiple days in a row. If you love fishing as much as I do, the live bait that you utilize can be absolutely precious from one day to the next. And to make sure that you keep your investment into fishing healthy and utilizable for more than one day, they make uh, coolers like this that are specifically made for carrying and transferring live bait. They open and they seal, so if they slosh around, the water won't slip out. They also have built-in aeration systems to keep your bait alive. I love this, especially in the spring when you're utilizing like spot tail shiners or more expensive minnows. And I also utilize it for leeches. I've got a leech bag just like this, a mesh bag that I pull out, drip, drain, put it inside my boat all day, end of the day, pull it out of the boat, put it back into this specific system that helps aerate and keep your bait alive from one day to the next. As fishermen, sometimes we're concerned with how we're gonna move minnows from one body of water to another. Well, one little trick that I utilize is that in the mornings when I buy my bait from my, from my bait dealer, I ask him for an extra bag of water, of which I keep this water inside a cooler in my pickup all day long. I can even keep it cool by throwing a little bit of ice on it or what have you. Then at the end of the day when I'm done fishing for the day, I'll take my bait bucket, I'll drain the lake water out of it, maybe it's a mesh bag or a bucket just like this, drain the lake water out of it and pour the minnows into the cooler separate water system. That way I can leave the lake water in the lake that I was fishing and I can transport down the highway safely, legally, and knowing that I'm protecting all of our natural resources by doing just that. You know what? Minnesota is 95% invasive species free in our aquatic environments. Let's help keep our Minnesota traditions strong and keep them clean. I'm about to go fishing for the day, but I'm already thinking about how I'm going to come off the water with my live bait. Well, my system right here that I utilize is I've got a cooler and I've got my minnows and I always ask my bait dealer for a little extra water in the morning because what I want to do here is I want to get to my, the place that I want to fish. I'm going to open up this, wa this water, my extra water here, open it up and pour that into my cooler. So it's nice and fresh in there. And then I'm gonna take my minnow bag that I've got here with the minnows, and I've got my bait bucket that came from my live well in the boat. I put that into the same cooler. I open up the minnow bag here, open it up, and dump the minnows right inside 
that minnow bucket. Get rid of these plastic bags. My minnow bucket now is ready to drain from this water into my boat after I launch. All right, boat's in the water. I'm gonna grab my bait. I pull it out of this water. Make sure that I get it all drained, nice and clean. There we go. Shut that cooler up, and this is pretty simple. Come around, live well pump's already running. Set my minnows in the boat, away I go. And the coolest part about this system is at the end of the day, it's reversed. Reach in, grab my minnows, drain the lake water off them, make sure it's 100% drained. Jiggle it a little bit, make sure that we're all gone. Just takes a second, and I'm ready to go from here back into the cooler. Keeping these water systems separate helps protect our lakes, make sure that our Minnesota traditions stay what they are today. Fishing with live bait is a big part of our culture here in the state of Minnesota. And you know what? At the end of the day, you don't need to throw away expensive live bait. You can save it and utilize it the next day if you plan ahead a little bit. So one of the things that I do is in the mornings when I, when I go to the bait dealer, I always go with a large cooler like this, and I'm gonna purchase my, my minnows. They're probably gonna come to me in an oxygenated bag just like this right here, full of nice clean water from the bait dealer. At the same time, I get a second uh, bag of clean water from that bait dealer. It's nice, it's cool, and most importantly, it's clean. Once I get to the body of water that I wanna fish that day, I know I'm gonna transfer it into a minnow bucket or minnow holding device. So there's mesh bags like this, there's a bucket I utilize in my live well back here that is just like this, or maybe you've got a flow through system that you tie onto your boat, something like that. Any one of these systems can be utilized because what you're gonna do is I open up the cooler like this, open up my mesh bag, take the minnows, pour the water through and keep them, get the minnows into the mesh bag. At that point, I take that water, shut this cooler, put it in the back of my pickup and let it sit there all day while the minnows go for a ride. They're sitting in my live well or in my bait bucket in my live well, utilizing them all day long. At the end of the day, it's as simple as lifting the mesh bag out of the live well, letting that drip and go clean, and then putting it back into the cooler that's in my pickup. And that way, and they're in fresh, clean water, and I can utilize them again the next day. There's other ways to do this as well. There's oxygenated coolers like this that you can specifically purchase just for that program. Cool water during spring and fall will keep your minnows alive in a big cooler like that, or whatever system works for you. It's a matter of just planning ahead, and you can have a great day on Minnesota waters. Protection of our Minnesota traditions starts right here. Every time we pull a boat, we're gonna do a walk around inspection and start the clean, drain, dry process. For myself, I like to get down here and take a good look around. And one of the reasons I stop on the boat ramp itself is it's much easier to see further underneath the boat. So it, because of the fact it's actually a ramp, makes it easier to see. But as I walk around the boat, a couple things I always do, I wanna get here, Pull the, pull the drain plug. I'm also gonna push the big engine all the way down and make sure that all the water comes out of the prop. Kneel down again, look underneath the boat, check the bunks, check the trailer, looking for any remnants of weeds or debris or anything that I can pull off here. Because this is how we protect our natural resources by myself, take, becoming proactive and clean draining and dry every time I come out of the water. You know what, it's the details that make the difference in protecting Minnesota's aquatic natural resources. I'm doing my part to help stop the spread of aquatic invasive species in a lot of different ways. One of the things that you need to think about, because well, at least I like to think about, is that everything that touches water, I wanna make sure it's clean, drained, and dry before my next fishing adventure. So that includes big items like this, drift socks that drag out over the side of the boat, these get wet, make sure that they dry completely 
between outings. Or maybe it's a, a minnow dip net that if you keep minnows inside your live well, or even a fish dip net here. Or how you transfer your bait. If you're utilizing a cooler system like this to move bait from one body of water to another, make sure that it's clean, drained, and dried, and even sterilized between fishing outings. Ballast boats, jet skis, fishing boats, and pontoons is really what we see on the water a lot. You can call the Crow Wing County AIS hotline, which is 218-824-1055, and that will direct you to local decontamination stations in the area. We also purchased a mobile uh, decon this year, uh, 2020, and we have moved that around to different locations. And also the DNR has portable decons that they move around throughout the county. So if you call that number, it'll provide you with all that information. To kill a zebra mussel, you have to have hot temperatures. So that's why we perform decons in the area so people can come up and get a decontamination done on their boat and get that hot water blast to kill those zebra mussels. When we perform a decontamination, we usually look on the outside of the boat first and see if there's anything attached. And then we aim for what is attached and not removable by hand. If a boater has used their live well or bait buckets, then we can look in uh, decon those compartments. Anything that was touched by water or used by the boater, we can do a decontamination. And definitely the motor too. We want to definitely get a motor flush through the engine because zebra mussels can also get into the motor. Appropriate time to decon is definitely when you're lake hopping, if you're not gonna have that recommended five day drive time, to definitely get a decon before going to another lake. If uh, there's attached zebra mussels, we go to 140, and that's 10 seconds at 140 to uh, do a low flow on the outside of the boat. Now you wanna drop it down to 120 if you're doing any compartments inside the boat that water has been introduced to. And then when we're talking about the motor, we wanna go back to 100 when we're doing a flush because motors can be sensitive and we don't wanna ruin the boater's personal equipment. If we have attached zebra mussels, we just killed them with 140. And so now we're gonna turn off the burner on the decon and we're gonna high pressure the outside with no temperature to blast off the zebra mussels. As a fisherman, it is all about catch and release. When it comes to aquatic invasive species, it's all about catch and kill. We wanna stop the spread. There's simple ways to do that. We're doing a great job of pulling our plug between bodies of water, but you know what? Things like nets, ropes that tie your boat to the dock, or even anchors that you utilize can all be transfer systems for aquatic invasive species. So don't forget to give yourselves a decon, especially if you're going between two bodies of water that you don't know the infiltration of those invasive species. It's as simple as a bath at 100 degrees for 10 minutes, 120 degrees for two minutes, or a 10 second blast of 140 degree water will kill those invasive species and protect our wonderful Minnesota traditions. Fishing boat is um, maybe a little more simple, but it's a different uh, procedure. You're definitely gonna look on the outside. You're gonna ask them if they're using their live well or a bait container. So they use more stuff that's inside the boat. And then you're gonna wanna look at their motor just like any typical boat. Now for a ballast boat, that's a little different because they have these ballast tanks and they can have multiple ballast tanks. And you really have to talk to the boater on how many ballast tanks or which ones they have used. And so when we do a decon on a ballast boat, we start with the ballast tanks first and we put that 120 degree water in there and we let it sit for five minutes and then they flush it out. So that will kill all zebra mussels and the water that's stagnant on the bottom of those ballast tanks. When a ballast boat comes into the access, um, one of the things inspectors ask them, even though a lot of them only go to that lake, a lot of inspectors will say, hey, do you have a ballast tank on there? Can you please turn it on? And water will just come out. You just don't know how much water is actually sitting on the bottom of it. So it's a really good learning experience to see that 
These ballast boats attain a lot of water and to make sure that it's all drained before going into a water body. Jet skis, you are, you know, you're going to want to be sensitive of that motor area, but we always train our inspectors to ask the boater if they will turn on their motor for about three seconds, just until that water spews out the back. You would be surprising at how much water actually comes from the back of the jet ski. And uh, once that water is gone, then we ask them to turn off their motor and it doesn't harm their motor at all. Kayaks, uh, we definitely would do the outside, but uh, you know, they do have drain plugs. So you want to keep that drain plug out and you'd want to tip that kayak all the way out so you, uh, you know, have that water draining before you leave the access and go into a different water body. As a fisherman, if you ever want to alleviate all worries about transferring the spread of aquatic invasive species from one body of water to another, and especially if you're coming from a known infested body of water, get your gear decon. And you can do it yourself if you'd like. It's simple as giving your gear a bath, 100 degree water for 10 minutes, or 120 degree water for two minutes, or 140 degree water for a simple 10 second blast will kill everything and make sure that you stop the spread of aquatic invasive species. Picking up decoys at the end of the day and one of the things you always want to remember to do to stop that spread of AIS is remove your aquatic plants. Easy to do right when you're picking up those decoys. As an avid waterfowler, we always want to stay up with the hot migration going on so we do transfer between bodies of water at times and we don't always have time to let these dry, but there is a way to decon them. Give them a hot water bath, 140 degrees for 10 seconds, 120 degrees for two minutes, or 100 degrees for 10 minutes. In between, quick, easy to do, and you're on to your next body of water to duck hunt. I love duck hunting and I wanna make sure it continues for future generations in Minnesota, so there's many things I do in between each of my hunts. I make sure all my gear is completely dry before I go to another lake, with that, by putting them in special bags, by going through and making sure all of my decoys are free of aquatic invasive species as well, each time I'm done hunting. So that way we can preserve the great sport of waterfowl hunting for future generations to come. Just got back in off the lake out here. We're gonna go through now. We just clean dried our boat. We gotta remember to do our decoys too. So I go through each one of my decoys, make sure they're wiped clean go through each of the weights and strings and check those. We tend to forget that all the time, especially when you got a lot of them, but it's easy to do, especially if you got a big group. Just grab them out, check, make sure you don't have any of that AIS going on them. So we wanna keep that, uh, prevent that spread. So just a good tip out there, check your decoys when you get back in. So we already know that we clean, dry our boat when we go from station to station or spot to spot out there. I love waterfowl hunting and we should do it all year round. So one of the things I do is I make sure I got good, good uh, bags that it drain well, allow airflow, allow everything to dry. That helps out too because our decoys can actually carry that AIS too. So this allows them to dry. Mine are in six slot bags or you can always use your classic nice mesh bag. Plenty of airflow through there, plenty to dry. So this is just one of the tips and tricks. We got to remember to do that to help stop the spread of AIS. Well, we just got in from a beautiful day out here on Leech Lake duck hunting. We've already cleaned and dried our boat for AIS, but one of the things many of us hunters forget about to do is to check all of our decoys to help that spread. So we always want to check our weights, go through each decoy, wipe them clean, wipe them off, get rid of the weeds. We do this because we want to make sure that we're protecting all of our traditions so that it can get passed down to our kids and stop that spread of AIS. One of the additional tricks that I always do too is I've got all these nice bags. They are six slot bags, but they got the drains on them. They help drain out that water, help those decoys dry out, especially if we're going in between lakes or different areas or using these nice big mesh bags right here too. Those allow a lot of plenty of airflow through them. They're easy to see. I can go through all my decoys, make sure there's a little bit of weed right there left over on one. We'll pull all that off, you know, make sure they're all clean, wiped off for that. So we can go on to our next adventure. So another option, you know, you gotta go through all your extra gear. I use a lot of long lines for my diver decoys. So you gotta make sure all your anchors, everything's clear of those AIS. We wanna make sure 
that we help stop that spread and this is one of those great things to go through each time we have it. We have plenty of time usually at the end of a great hunt with all of our friends. Share that with them, go through all of your gear and make sure you keep that tradition alive for all our future generations to explore. We just pulled the boat out of here, duck hunting, great day out on the lake. We want to make sure we walk around and start pulling all our AIS off of there. Make sure we clean, dry, no matter what season it is, so we protect all of our lakes in our area. Also, got to remember to pull that plug. We called the school and asked if anybody would be interested in some goldfish. We have some extras. It was getting way overpopulated. They've been in there for close to nine years now. That's why there's so many of them. And we knew we just had to get the numbers down. They do multiply. They multiply a lot. Just about anything that isn't native is gonna end up being invasive. It's gonna be really tough on the native habitat, so it's a good lesson. You start with a fish bowl, right? And then you go bigger and bigger, and pretty soon it's like, well, we just don't have room for them anymore. And so then people have, a, have trouble knowing because they don't wanna kill them. And so they, wanna, they need to find a home. So then you try to find some place that's got a bigger body of water that you can store or keep them in without danger of them getting away into the wild. They want to see if you're going to feed them, you guys. Weight's on the downside. You don't need to be right at the edge because the fish aren't at the edge, right? And so just kind of walk through the middle. What are we supposed to do with goldfish, you guys? What do we do? We got a bunch of goldfish. Where can you put them and where can't you put them? Put them in ponds like this. You can put them in ponds like this. Why is this a good pond to put them in? not leading to a lake. Because it's not, there's no outlet, right? So we don't want these fish getting into our natural systems. They'll live for a long, long time. I don't honestly know exactly how long they last, but we've had some in there for 25 years. And so I know that they live at least that long. And I'm, I'm sure that they live quite a bit longer because um, they're a pretty resilient fish, really. Yeah, they can be long-term pets. I think people, as far as with the ponds and stuff, they're like, well, if I put them in my pond in the summertime, what do I do with them in the wintertime? Right. We're fortunate because we've got groundwater going through sure. here, but a lined pond, you wouldn't have that, so you'd right. have to take them in right. for the wintertime. Yeah. Well, then it's a matter of having some place to put them right. for the winter. Yeah. Quite a few people often get a tank in an a area that doesn't freeze hard, right. but just right. to like that 30 to 40 degree temperatures. I don't know if dormant is the right term, but whatever term that would be. Um, and they just slow down and they don't eat and they just kind of settle in for the winter and then you can release them back into your pond in the spring again. But sometimes that's just a lot more work than people, what people want to go through. They will eat some um, critters that are in there, but you have to feed them all. <laughs> and so when you feed them all and as they multiply in numbers, then you're going through an awful lot of feed. And so sometimes even that's a limitation for people and they just get tired of buying the 50, gal or 50 pound bags of uh, fish food. So then how can you eliminate some of that population to get them down to a more manageable level? We've had them in there for close to nine years now, the last baker's dozen we put in. Nine years ago they did food salt. So then we put a baker's dozen in and this is what we ended up with. We could have somebody dump it into that big well, this was a nice project. Now we'll have to go home and, and we will let that kind of settle and see if we can get some of the dirt to settle to the bottom. And then we'll open our valve and just see if we can wash some of the dirty water out. And then we're probably gonna put them just like this and let the water go through here and we'll catch the fish and then put them into better water so that we don't put that water in directly into our pond. Yeah, yeah, so we'll have to do some cleaning up and everything. But it worked out great, and um, we'll have fun repopulating our pond back there. So if you use them for bait, first of all, it's illegal. But second of all, all your bait doesn't get killed in the water. It's going to get escape, and then it's going to multiply, and then it's going to be really tough on the native habitat. They multiply a lot. Total decontamination takes 10 to 15 minutes. If you go through a car wash, it takes you about 10 to 15 minutes. Having this uh, decontamination done to your boat doesn't take that much time at all to protect our waters and our water resources here in Minnesota. 
So basically the process is, is that you come in, you back up your trailer and you get asked a few questions and then the watercraft inspector will look over your watercraft at that time to examine if there's any attached zebra mussels, if there's any plants on the carpeted bunkers, or if there's any water in the live well or lower units. We hire about 60 watercraft inspectors for each season. We are checking for any kind of aquatic invasive species, zebra mussels, uh, plants, Eurasian water milfoil. Basically, we're looking for water. We don't want any water leaving the lake or coming into the lake that was from a different water body. So making sure everything's clean, drain and dry. Lake hopping is the riskiest boat movement that we have in uh, Minnesota and in the U.S. But one thing that you should definitely do is make sure you drain all water out of your boat, live wells, and any type of water that you have in your bait container or your lower unit because zebra mussels are microscopic at their first life of their stage. And so it's really important that we drain all the water out because we don't see what's in those, that water at that time. Let's think about night crawlers for just a second. I love catching fish and utilizing night crawlers to do so. With that, when you buy your night crawlers, they come in little containers like this, usually filled with dirt. One thing I do is I'll take a, a small cooler like this and I will dedicate that my night crawler cooler. I will then fill it with some worm bedding, take the night crawlers out of the container they came in, rinse them off, and let them live inside this worm bedding in the cooler, and I can transfer that from the car to the boat and fish it and not have to worry about spreading any invasive species anywhere at any time. Summertime in Minnesota is family time in Minnesota, especially when we're talking about lakes, rivers, and streams. Oh, how we enjoy this special, special time of year. But to protect these resources from aquatic invasive species, it really all comes down to the details. So as we jump from lake to lake and go visit all of our friends around this great state, don't forget to clean, drain, and dry all of your toys. I'm talking about your aquatic socks, your paddle boards, float tubes, uh, water skis, ropes, anything that you're transporting from one body of water to another needs to be dried. Or you can also decon it yourself. A 140 degree bath for as little as 10 seconds will do the job. Or 120 degrees for two minutes or a simple 100 degree water bath for 10 minutes will eliminate any aquatic invasive species bacteria from being transported from one body to another. Enjoy our Minnesota traditions. As parents, we want to preserve our Minnesota traditions for our next generation. And one of the best ways to do that too is include your family in clean draining and drying. Make them part of the process. Teach them about taking your aquatic socks off and drying them completely as you go from one body of water to another. Or be it a life vest, or maybe it's a tube, or it's the tow rope for the inner tube. Whatever it happens to be, make sure that you include them in the process and teach them about whether you're gonna dry it or you're gonna give it a hot bath. Remember, this is scalding hot water. 140 degrees for 10 seconds will kill aquatic invasive species bacteria, or 120 degrees for two minutes, or a 100 degree bath for 10 minutes will get the job done. But either way, as a family, we're protecting the resources for the next generation. Just got done picking up decoys and made sure they're free of AIS. And one of the next things you want to do, and we always forget about, are waders. They're in the water a lot of the times. We want to make sure that they're clean of any AIS out there, clean and dry, before we head out to our next body of water. So for many of us, we like to travel and follow the hot waterfowl migration through the state of Minnesota. For many of us too, our waders are our boats as we get out there. And we don't always have time to get them dry, but you can decon your waders in between. So you want to make sure you do a hot water bath, 140 degrees for 10 seconds. 
120 degrees for two minutes or 100 degrees for 10 minutes and you're ready to go off to that next body of water.